SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we could have potentially some horrible news for mobile network operators. T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, we'll even throw in Dish. Uh, this could spell trouble for them. Uh, we do have uh, a new Spectrum deal, uh, and this, this could impact them, and actually us, because we're the ones using the networks, and we know that our networks are going to need more capacity very, very soon. All right, mobile network usage is increasing. The companies like T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T are, are building home internet user bases on their networks now, and they need more spectrum, and this could put a uh, an issue or a constraint to that. All right, let's talk about it here in today's video. I'll provide a link for the NTIA.gov press release on the administrative launch of the spectrum strategy from the Biden administration. That'll be down in the description. Ways to support us can be found there as well. Please do like and share this video. Subscribe if it's your first time here and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks. So uh looks like according to most recent reports uh, coming out today, even uh, spectrum management and lawmaking and bills between, you know, the United States Commerce Department and the U.S. Department of Defense. Those of you that don't understand what I'm talking about, this deal is big because the Department of Defense is who has access to this really important large amount of bandwidth in the three gigahertz range. Now, this one, we'll just call it lower three gigahertz. Uh, C-band was, was um, which came from satellite, was auctioned for 3.7 gigahertz to, I think, 4.2 or something like that. I think that's where that band is. Um, we also had, um, you know, CBRS spectrum shared and all those rules and all that mess has become in the 3.5 gigahertz range. DOD was auctioned at the 3.4 gigahertz range. So literally all that's left down in the lower third of three gigahertz is uh is that 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 last piece of bandwidth it's it's a lot it's a it's a good amount of bandwidth but we don't want to see it encumbered we don't want to see it restricted low powered and shared because then it's going to be like cbrs where you have limited range indoor propagation is questionable and suspect and all those things anyways the moves that we're seeing here today in washington indicate that this could be uh, an indication that the Spectrum and National Security Act, which was, I think, introduced back in April of this year. Uh, this program has basically uh, been created to reinstate the FCC's auction authority. We like that. We need an FCC that's functional and can actually do shit. All right, so we have that, uh, the Spectrum management process, right? We need that clarity. Uh, and then, of course, you, we lost the ACP funding and, and that program. Uh, and then, of You've also got national security with Huawei gear that's got to get ripped and replaced and all that stuff. Anyways, something that can't be overlooked has to be this last bit of three gigahertz. And we've got probably a, something that's going to come, at, I'd say probably sometime this week uh, in regards to this plan and this the spectrum strategy. So things are busy in Washington, right? And the Spectrum and National, national Security Act of 2024 is going to be the framework for how these things are handled. I think what the United States government wants to see happen is some kind of spectrum sharing of that lower three gigahertz band. And I don't want to see that. And I don't think any of us do. And it's not because we don't want to see shared spectrum, you know, bands. I, I think band 46 has proven to be solid for that. And I think, you know, there's other frequency potentials and higher frequency ranges you know, where it could become useful for fixed wireless acts and other things. But the three gigahertz of that, that lower third, this is all that's left. That is the last of the low mid band. From this point moving forward, everything starts to move much higher. You know, you're talking about frequencies closer to six gigahertz and five gigahertz. And then in the future, you know, we're going to be talking about 12 gigahertz and millimeter wave because you're, you have to move up to get the bandwidth. And those frequencies don't travel as far and they don't get high power levels. And they don't get indoors as well. So we need those things, right? We need, a, we need to be competitive. If you look at what's going on internationally, you will see that in all these different countries in Europe and Asia, they have multiple large swaths of bandwidth in you know the 2 to 3 gigahertz range and then from the 3 to 4 gigahertz range. They have tons of it, hundreds of megahertz of bandwidth. We really just have carriers that have like, the C-band, right? AT&T with C-band, Verizon with C-band, and then, 
you know, T-Mobile's got a little bit of that, but it's really the N41 piece, right? The, the EBS BRS and the 2.5 gigahertz. They need more. We need more, right? Well, obviously millimeter wave is important. CRAN is important. Densification is important. Fiber is important. But the lifeblood of wireless networking is bandwidth. And if we're going to be into this whole leadership approach, we need to make sure that this lower three gigahertz band goes high power is not limited by any type of spectrum sharing with the DOD and, and the United States, uh, are, you know, armed forces and military. They just need to give it up, right? They, they have other swaths of spectrum they can have access to. If we're serious about this, the government is going to have to push this. So I'm concerned that what's going on here with this spectrum strategy and this group, you know, what are they going to do with their decisions, right? It's it, We're going to have answers very, very soon. Guys, CBRS is fine for what it's intended for. We don't need another CBRS. We need another C-band. We need another DOD. We need high-powered 3 gigahertz frequency if we're really going to do this 5G thing, right? What's your take on all this? How do you think it's going to end up? I, I, I know for a fact the carriers are politicking. I know they're working behind closed doors. They're meeting with these people. I hope... You know, and it's not me hoping that corporations get, you know, gr these these great handouts and stuff, but they build national networks. We don't need regional networks. Those days have come and gone. We need strong national networks for multi-purposes. Fixed wireless access has proven to be good. Mobile networking, all those things. We need it. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section below. Go the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.